Hey guys, Ash Lane here today, excited to bring you a guide for people who have just upgraded to Town Hall 9. I have guest Morph on. He has four accounts that have already been to or are currently at Town Hall 9. We'll talk about upgrading, farming, wars, trophy pushing. We'll touch on a lot of topics, and uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. In the background, we'll have some three-star war attacks after a, a minute or two of the, uh, to the conversation topics, and then at the end of the episode in the background, we'll have an example of a decent trophy and war base that you guys could uh, copy and use if you're interested. So enjoy guys. All right guys, we are here with Morph and Morph. I figured you'd be the perfect guest to have on to help me talk about Town Hall 9 because you're re upgrading what your third or fourth account to Town Hall 9 now? I'm getting ready to upgrade my fourth to Town Hall 9. Wow. So you've done it four times, correct? This is your fourth time through? This will be my fourth time through. All right, so you're going to be the man to help give some great advice to all my uh, viewers and listeners out there. So we have some strategy points that we, uh, some talking points that we jotted down here, and this video is going to be more geared towards people who just upgraded Town Hall Nine. But I'm sure there'll be a few, uh, a few little trinkets that you can pick up, uh, words of wisdom throughout the episode as well. If you're a uh, established Town Hall Nine, so let's move right into things here. Let's talk. Let's start at the beginning, Morph. What changes from Town Hall 8 to Town Hall 9, uh, mainly offensively speaking? Uh, offensively speaking, there is a lot of lab work to do. There's a lot of troops. Up I mean, everything but four troops you get to upgrade in your lab. And you get to unlock two new troops, an extra spell. Uh, all those things are really valuable, and they lead a lot of diversity into your attacking style so absolutely uh, people yeah. a lot of people say that town hall is their favorite town hall uh, town hall nine is their favorite town hall level and that's partially because this is when you know a whole new world of opportunity unlocks to you as far in terms of attacking like you said uh the uh the, the new troops and the new spell uh, are all should be huge priorities so speaking of priorities uh, the whole the whole upgrade game changes as well. What would your upgrade recommendations be for a newer Town Hall 9? Well, as, as, if you're brand new to Town Hall 9, um, I would say the, the first thing you want to do with your gold is to upgrade your clan castle. You get five extra housing space spots. You're, you're able to hold 30 now. You get to carry a golem. You get to carry a lava hound. And the more troops you can bring to a battle, the more successful you can be. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and with all your elixir, uh, I would recommend upgrading your spell factory because you get, you get your jump spell at Town Hall 9. Uh, a lot of the multi-phased attacks that you, know, you can do, almost every one of them requires a jump spell just to get you know, into the base. Yeah. And and beyond that, uh, you know, you get five extra housing space spots at each army camp, so you get to add an additional twenty more troops that you bring to the battle. So so at Town Hall Nine, you get to add twenty five additional troops that you get to take into battle with you. Yeah, and that's actually that's a, that's a good point. That's a huge advantage on offense. Uh, so. So your let me just uh, reiterate here. Your favorite, your number one priority is clan castle with gold, and mm -hmm. with elixir, it's army camp spell factory. Uh, well, spell factory army camps, and then you want to get your lab up and going, right? Yep, yep. And because because as a new town hall nine, you just need a ton of resources, and you know you can use. There's plenty of stuff to use: gold, elixir, dark elixir. So you absolutely. Know, now, yeah. well. Well, that's a good point. Now, would you recommend folks out there uh, start upgrading their farming troops before war troops? Or how do you go about choosing which uh, troop to upgrade or spell to upgrade in your lab? It, it really depends on, you know, your style of play. If, if uh, you know, if, if you're new to Town Hall 9, you just want to take a, a little break and, and just get used to everything that's changing you you might want to focus on you know what you've had success with farming at town hall eight you know jai barge and um so 
if if it's more of a if it's more of a war focus if you know if you see uh, a lot of videos and you know with different uh, multi-phase attacks like you know goho and and go lava then you know you want to put more emphasis on upgrading the troops that go with those multi-phase attacks yeah i agree with you i think that's good advice i think there's no one size fits all advice for what to upgrade in a, in a proper order even even defensively i think it really depends on what your goals are in the game if you're a farmer if you're a war player if you just want a trophy push uh, there's all different sets of uh, advice for each level, but I do think that, uh, you know, me personally, and I know you're probably the same way, unless I'm wrong, uh, <laughs> I like to focus on uh, one strategy. You know, you mentioned Goho, so Golems and Hogs. Hopefully they're already, uh, you know, up max for Let Town Hall 8, so hopefully your, your Hogs are already uh, at level uh, 4 and your Golems are level 2 Correct. for Town Hall 8, so... Hopefully you can go ahead and just add that extra layer, the extra level on the hogs, and that would be my priority. That way I could execute a three star attack. Uh, but that's me personally. I'm a war guy, you know. But if you're if you really want to get loot and maximize how much loot you can get, you might want to go with you know as you mentioned giants or or barch barbarians and archers. So it really depends on how war focused you are, how pushing focused you are. Yep. So. I wanted to just touch on just a broad question, is how is Town Hall 9 unique from any other Town Hall level in the game? Now, there's a lot introduced at Town Hall 9, so, you know, let's just kind of set the table for us. What can we be expecting? How is it different, and uh, and why is this is it important to uh, to identify how it's unique? Uh, I, I would say the, the biggest point that makes it unique is you get a queen, yeah. and... And that, you know, when you, anytime you get a ranged weapon uh, as powerful as she is, um, you know, you, you all of a sudden, from Town Hall 8 to Town Hall 9, have this brand new element of firepower behind what you're already sending in. And your push, so when you, when you attack a base, your push into the base just happens so much faster and so much quicker, and you're able to you know, get to your, you know, whether it be war and you're looking for, you know, a high value target for your strategy or your farming and, you know, you just want to get to that dark elixir tank. So yeah. it, 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 the queen really makes life easier um, in, on all fronts. Absolutely. Now, obviously, the queen is going to be your second unit uh, that's that's powered and upgraded by dark elixir. Uh, is there a easy way or a, uh, you know, what's your favorite way, I should say, to farm that Dark Elixir? Because you're definitely going to need it with the uh, with the upgrades in the lab and the Queen. It's important to get her to level 5 so you can unlock that uh, Royal Cloak ability she has. Right. And, and you know, that's an, that's another thing that, you know, makes Town Hall 9 unique is, is your need to get Dark Elixir increases dramatically from Town Hall 8. Yeah. So, because you you have lab items, you have your king, you have your queen, uh, they they all need uh, dark elixir. But as far as as far as my personal style, um, I mean, I've done it so many times. I feel like I've done it so many ways. Uh, <laughs> well, what but, is your favorite way, or the most effective, or something that you felt that well, you know I've got it right this time, or at least this this feels right? Uh, you know, I've I've never really been uh, a guy that preferred using giants i preferred barch um just because it's it's so versatile and you know if you see a base that has different things on offer uh you, you know barch can get you two layers into a base pretty easily and sometimes even three into the core uh d depending on you know what the base looks like and how upgraded the defenses are but um if you really want to be conscientious about how much dark elixir you're spending you know giants with barch or just barch in general uh i think a lot of times i've ended up doing it uh with bam barbs archers and minions mm -hmm. just because i feel like the you know what the minions add because a lot of times you can push into a base with barbs or giants or i mean barbs giants you know archers whatever and a lot of times you know you can get so far and then you know, maybe you didn't get a cannon down. Maybe there was a cannon off to the side, you know, taking out a lot of troops. 
And if you just hold back a few minions, you know, send a minion in to, to sweep for the area for air bombs. And then th sometimes that minion, you know, can take down a storage for you. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people bring, you know, at least a handful of minions to their barch raids, even if not, it's even if it's not an even one third, one third, one third army. So, right. Uh, it's a, definitely a good point. Uh, so I, I think that's a good uh, touching upon uh, how it's unique. Obviously, the queen is huge to Town Hall Nine. She's your best weapon offensively uh, throughout the game from here on out. So getting that queen is absolutely a game changer. Uh, I did want to talk uh, briefly about defensive upgrades. Uh, what is the first defensive unit you're going to throw on the map when you're at Town Hall 9? Uh, I mean, the first defensive, I'm going to... Uh, she's, you know, the queen. <laughs> okay, she, gold. She, a gold base. She can defend. She can, uh, you know, she can attack for you. Um, a lot of people, I feel like, when they first go to Town Hall 9, um, they want those expos. They've They've been, uh, you know, attacking bases with expos, and mm -hmm. and uh, they want those expos themselves. Yeah. But uh, f for me, um, because I see the I see the long term value in it. Um, I really like air defenses and archer towers because air defenses. Uh, because a lot of times you just have trouble stopping an air attack yeah. in general. Uh, if, if somebody throws a bunch of lava hounds at you, you know, and you're still operating on three level six air defenses or lower, you, your base just can't handle it. So, um, that extra air defense and then, you know, taking them up to level seven, um, can, can kind of mitigate, you know, just, just getting run over in general. Yeah. Uh, but and the archer tower is just so versatile because uh, you know it can attack ground, it can attack air, um, and the same thing you know with your expos because expos really kind of anchor your base uh, if you're more of a if you're more of a trophy pusher per se. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'm the same way as you. I actually hold off on my expos as well. And that's not necessarily conventional, you know, I guess uh, it's going a little bit off the norm because like you said, people love putting those Expos down because they're a new defense and people like right. new. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that uh, I think that me personally, I place a priority uh, on, you know, splash damage, wizard towers, uh, wizard mm -hmm. towers and archer towers for me are, are really big. Uh, so that's what would be my two that I would focus on. And then I would move on from there, maybe touching on the Teslas and mortars uh, from there. So it really is unique to what your what type of league maybe you're farming in and obviously what what caliber wars you have. So air, that's where air defense would come into play, as you mentioned. Correct. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit uh, briefly about base design. So everybody knows what an anti three star base is and a trophy base is. Uh, what would be your recommendation as to when to use a trophy base and when to use an anti three star base? When you need to change? And uh, and, and briefly, if you could just tell us uh, what they both are, in case any viewers don't know yet, what a anti three versus a trophy base is. Right. So uh, a trophy base uh, has the town hall typically in the center of the base. Uh, and then, you know, with, with Town Hall 9, everything kind of comes in fours. And so you typically have, like, four quadrants of defenses. And and the, the idea is to defend against someone taking your Town Hall down because uh, after they, you know, get that second star, they get, you know, the two-thirds of the offer uh, of the cups if you're in uh, player versus player multiplayer. And if... As far as in, in wars where everything changes, um, because it, it you really have to consider everything that is going on in your war. You know where where are you at? If you're at the the bottom of your war map, uh, then you know on your own side you you probably want to consider uh, an asymmetrical design or an anti three star base. So you would use you would offset the town hall. Um, on one side of your base and use that town hall as a you know giant meat shield because the town hall uh, is one of your largest hit point buildings on the map that they have to go through and so you, you kind of want to design your base so that way the attacker uh, is going to be slowed down by that town hall uh, mm -hmm. and kind of kind of arrange everything around you know the rest of the base 
that way it's not necessarily as appealing to them to start on the side of the base without the town hall. Uh, but if you're if you're at the top of your war map, um, depending on what the enemy clan you're warring against has, uh, you you might want to go with just a you know traditional town hall in the center kind of base. Um, you know if because they might they might have trouble you know getting your town hall down and fifty percent. It just it just kind of depends on you know your quick evaluation. Of the enemy clan. Yeah, and another thing too, just to to, to add on there is, uh, oftentimes people will say, "How do I tell whether I need an anti three or a or a, a two star trophy base?" Right. And oftentimes you can tell by just looking at your mirror on the other side of the map, or at least the people in your in your in your range. And if they have anti three bases, it would probably right. do you well to change to anti three because that means their people usually defend how they attack. So if they're if they're worried about three stars on their base, they're usually shooting for three stars themselves. So it's an easy little tip there to help you out. But it really depends on the caliber of wars that you're that you're you're partaking in uh, what to use. But uh, I think you touched on a really nice uh, final note there on on, on base design. And it's with the hit points. A lot of people don't talk about this. Obviously, you want your double giant bombs. You want your uh, you want your clan castle centralized and hopefully unlurable as well. But a lot of people don't talk about the placement of storages, especially on war bases. Because on war bases, you're not losing loot, obviously, when people are attacking your storages. So where they are has no you know barometer as to uh, where your loot is. So unlike the actual out in the wild, you have to worry about where your storages are because you don't want people getting all your loot. Right. In, in wars... Storages do a great job at protecting vital critical units like the queen. So, I think that you were on the you know you really hit on something nice there for for viewers. Is a good idea is take your base, take an anti three star design that maybe you see on on either the internet internet base, but you have to change it because people know how to attack those bases. And a great way to change some of the things are you can play around with the locations of the point damage or some of the traps. But another thing you can do is help bolster up an area around that queen uh, to help protect her and by do, by doing by moving your gold storages and your elixir storages around her. Right. And if you know if 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 it's your first time going up to 9, um, you know, and you you've really been focused on Town Hall 8, uh, you know, use use what you have. Um, you know, watch some, you know, like you said, go on the internet and find some bases and move the traps around. A lot of times, those those anti three bases really allow you to to put double giant bombs in different locations. That way, it's not always the same. Yeah. Um, you know, as you as you see online, and you know, talk to your clanmates. You know, if you see somebody uh, that has an anti three that's holding up well, or you know, you see them tinkering with their base a lot, odds are that you know they have some experience and and can maybe give you some ideas so you can make it your own. Absolutely, and uh, I guess on a final note, do you have a favorite unit for either when you're trophy pushing or when you're just in Clan Wars for uh, for defense as a Town Hall 9? I mean, one thing we should have mentioned is the, the number one reason that we're upgrading that Clan Castle uh, right away as our fo first gold upgrade is so we can hold a 30 hit point, or thir a 30 troop space, excuse me, right. unit. So you can bring, you have the capacity to, the capability to bring a max golem or a max lava hound uh, with you, uh, especially on clan war attacks. Now, is there anything that you recommend defensively? I know you have a lot of experience with the four accounts, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, those are all good points because, uh, you know, you can you can hold a lava hound now, and a lava hound can really stall out an attack. It can really separate if, you know, if you have golems uh, charging forward, uh, you know, your shooters like your wizard and your archers and your queen, they can kind of get separated. They, they get held back and start attacking that, that lava hound. Uh, meanwhile, your golems are charging forward um, mm -hmm. and, and getting hit with defense. Uh, dragons are also good. Dragons, balloons. Um, you know, if you got somebody in your clan that's that's got a high level dragon, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't be afraid to ask for it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely both. 
both in wars and out in the uh, in the world of when you're protecting against farmers and protecting against uh, while well, you're trying to gain cups, perhaps uh, dragons are certainly the most popular, I would say, uh, ineffective unit in the clan castle. So right. I agree with you there. But uh, Morph, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I think we're going to wrap it up there, keep it at around 20 minutes. And uh, I just wanted, like I said, I think you provide a, a lot of great insight as someone who's been there quite a few times. So thank you so much for being on. It was great. Thank you. No problem. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Just a few ways you can help the channel out. Number one, like. Number two, subscribe. Number three, comment. Tell me what you think of the video. I really appreciate it, guys, and it really helps me out a lot. Also, you can find me on social media. I'm active every day on Twitter at Clash underscore with underscore Ash and on Bindle chat group, hashtag Clash with Ash. And as always, you can find me on my website at www.clashwithash.com. Thanks, guys.